Welcome back. An update now on the haze in Indonesia and how it might affect us here in Singapore. A number of cities in Indonesia's Riau province have declared emergency status as their air quality worsens. Affected areas include Dumai City, where the pollutant standards index hit 773 yesterday. Now, anything above 300 is considered hazardous. 145 burning areas or hotspots have been detected across Riau and so far Singapore has largely escaped the effects of the neighbouring haze due to favourable wind patterns. In the meantime, here in Singapore itself, we're also grappling with a major dry spell. Acting Manpower Minister Tan Chuan Jin says the present dry spell is worrying and affecting our neighbours and us as well. He posted this on Facebook this afternoon. He says that while Singaporeans are managing the situation, we should not take water for granted. He says water is a real cause of concern the world over and has asked Singaporeans to remain prudent about our water consumption and to also be aware of what goes on to ensure that we have a secure water supply. Now, separately, the Singapore Civil Defence Force says that there were four times the number of vegetation fires early this year compared to last. So between February and uh, between January and February, first two months of this year, there have been about 100 vegetation fires. And last year, it was just 25. Uh, most of such fires were minor and no injuries were reported. Now, another consequence of the dry spell is that mosquitoes of this breed, they're called southern house mosquitoes, have become a lot more common. Pest control experts say that these are active at night and usually thrive between February and May. And the dry weather also means that mosquito breeding spots are less likely to be flushed away by the rain. And so to discuss with us the changing weather patterns, I have with me in studio Associate Professor Ko Tae Yong. He's a weather expert from the Nanyang Technological University. He's a presser. Uh, great having you with me here today. So as you mentioned earlier at the top, uh, situation in Indonesia is, seems to be getting worse. A lot more hotspots detected. So far, we're not getting it too bad, but do you think eventually we might go back to last year where the situation was quite bad, the haze was really bad in Singapore? I think in this season, it's rather unlikely because um, the wind is blowing from the north and east, and so uh, most of the haze actually will be blown away from us rather than towards us. So I don't think it will happen like what it did last year. So yeah. in your opinion, uh, weather mm. patterns or the wind patterns rather uh, moving in our favour? Yes, definitely. Okay, so we're seeing a lot more hot and dry weather in January. Uh, it's said to be a record dry mm. spell. So what are the reasons for this? Well, um, usually in February, we do have a drier period because uh, the, rain, the moisture is being carried further south of us. Mm -hmm. um, but as the climate system goes, uh, no two years are alike. And so this year, what happened was that um, we had an intra-seasonal oscillation, which is a pattern of uh, dry and wet weather oscillating back and forth on a time scale of 30 to 60 days. Okay. Um, so at the end of January, we, have, we had such an episode of um, dry weather um, coming from the west. Usually these uh, large-scale weather patterns originate from West Indian Ocean okay. and they propagate eastward along the equator across the Malay archipelago onto the Pacific. And so at the end of January, we had such a dry weather pattern propagating over us and that in, it, that in a way brought forward the usual dry weather in February so that it began earlier in mid-January. Mm -hmm. And that constitutes essentially our current longer dry spell. Right, so that was a record uh, 27 days of, of no yes. rain. It was really dry. Yeah. So what does this speak, or what do you think this uh, says about climate change in general and how it affects Singapore and how it will affect Singapore in the future as well? Yes, I, I think um, if we look into the problem of climate change, uh, we are looking at long-term changes. And right now, the state of the knowledge as regards to extreme events like floods or dry spells or drought, um, the projections are rather uncertain, but uncertainty is a cause uh, for concern because um, it affects how we prepare for it. Mm -hmm. So the current dry spell does uh, serve to remind us that um, looking into the future, we are not very sure under the generic um, climate change scenario, uh, would we have more um, dry spells or not, or would the dry spells last longer or not? So um, all the more we should be um, be more environmentally conscious and try to mitigate our carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. So um, we try to lessen our impact on uh, the global warming problem. So uh, minimize our energy consumption exactly. as well. Exactly. 
Uh, Professor, one last question. What kind of weather conditions do you think we should expect in the months uh, to come? Well, um, looking at sort of an intra-seasonal forecast from uh, many models around the world, um, it's expected that um, this sort of dry spell is going to stay around um, this region for the next uh, two weeks at least. Okay. And so um, I don't think the, the, the dry spell would go away immediately. And going on ahead, um, there is a chance that it might persist longer. Um, it all depends on um, later on uh, the progress of the monsoon. Okay. Uh, this year, the monsoon has been a bit strong. And um, so, so it might push the, the, the moisture further south than usual. And, and we might also uh, have uh, some time to wait before the season changes into the inter-monsoon uh, inter period. All right. Thank yes. you very much, Professor. That was thank very in informative. Thank you for coming today.